last day of July, the first day of August tomorrow, and that will make, I don't want to say it's going to make it easier, it will make it less complicated uh, in regards to doing the math to how many days before school starts, which is set for the ninth day of August here in McGoffin County. Glad to have you with us tonight. Glad we had a beautiful weekend. Got a little more nice weather in store. High pressure still in charge through at least tomorrow. Thereafter, rain chances will work their way back into the forecast. And we'll get to that in much more detail in just a few moments. A few thoughts on today's date in our weather history from our National Weather Service friends. Back in 1995, an active day across eastern Kentucky. A lot of severe weather and a lot of high temperatures. Back in 95, Jackson scored, or recorded, I should say more appropriately, at a high of 97 degrees. That was a record set in Jackson. Uh, and, and again met in 1999, also on that day in 95, a lot of storms. Breathitt County hit hard, a lot of downed trees, and a lot of high winds there as a part of the storms that rolled through. And on this date, a little later on in 99, London, that office set a uh, daytime high record of 99 degrees, no, of 101 degrees in 99. So it's been a hot one on this day before. Tonight, it's just, today, it's just pretty nice. But we've got a great deal to talk about weather-wise. Headlines tonight will include uh, just an update in a couple of places that I'll be between now and when I see you next and the day after. And I'll explain that in a few moments. Uh, looking at, as you can well imagine, another couple of meth-related arrests, two men jailed and being held on a $35,000 bond total between the two. And I've got a correction that I knew we were going to have to make because we knew at the time of reporting that court records, uh, just the documents that we had, were not correct in the sentencing of Henry Lyon of McGoffin County. And we'll have that in its uh, entirety in just a few seconds. The Johnson County School District has a new superintendent of schools and a great deal of other information to pass along to tonight. We'll begin with our first story. It actually goes back to last week, but it still follows the trend of a meth-related arrest to be reported here in the program nearly every day for weeks. But now in this case, two men from Floyd County are still being held after a court appearance earlier today. Their preliminary hearing held over for, I believe, about a week or so, but nevertheless held uh, together on a total of $35,000 in bond money after being arrested by Trooper Dustin Thompson last week on trafficking in methamphetamine charges here in Salyersville. Thompson notes in his arrest citation that last Wednesday morning around 323, he noticed a vehicle on 460 that only had one headlamp. The other was out. And then he also noticed after getting behind that car that it had expired tags and he conducted a traffic stop on the vehicle. He says that upon talking with the driver, Jesse Pete Kraft of Prestonsburg, that the driver told him he didn't have his operator's license with him, which the officer later found out to be suspended. He also noticed that the driver's pupils were tightly constricted and that he was nervous and that he was showing some other signs of being impaired. He asked him to get out, which he did, and he says the driver then kept looking back at the vehicle. He asked him if he had anything illegal in his pockets. He said he had a half of a Suboxone pill and then pulled that from his pocket. And then he asked if he had any other prescription medication that he had taken prior to getting behind the wheel to which he said he hadn't. He did fill a sobriety test which the driver failed and he then asked the driver if he'd been smoking meth to which he told him it had been at least a day since he had. When he asked Kraft if there was anything illegal in the vehicle he said that there wasn't that he knew of but it wasn't his car. He was then handcuffed and taken into custody and placed in the back of Thompson's cruiser. Thompson then went on to the passenger, Jeffrey Blackburn, and asked him if there was anything illegal in the vehicle, which he immediately stated he had a rig, a needle, as he was referring to, and that it was between his seat and the center console. Thompson says he also asked Blackburn if there was anything else illegal in the car, and Blackburn hesitated and said that if there was, it wasn't his, and then he kind of looked towards the driver's side of the car. He asked Blackburn if he was opposed to him searching the vehicle, which he stated that he wasn't, he just didn't want him to get poked with the needle doing so. Thompson says that he went to the driver's side of the car. Troopers also found a glass smoking pipe with burnt residue under the driver's seat, two clear plastic bags, which contains a clear glass inside believed to be crystal meth. That was stuffed under the seat next to the door. And due to the large quantity of the substance, the officers believed that it was much more than just personal use. Before we go on to other headlines, let me pass along some future headlines to you tonight and an invitation to join 
us and those at the Art Bar tomorrow evening beginning at 6. I might be a little late for that one, but I will be there. Yeah, the Art Bar is a story in and of itself, and it's a story I've been anxious to do. It's a local business. It focuses on the arts. They have events where, and a lot of you have already been there, uh, where you come down, you, you get a paint in a wonderful, relaxed setting, have a lot of fun, you get some instruction, and you walk out with a nice, uh, nice work of art for yourself or your family. It also serves as a local gallery as well. And tomorrow is their first uh, exhibit, if you will, a reception with refreshments honoring the work of Heather Owens, a local artist who's been described as, uh, having art with a fresh and surreal vision of whimsical animals with a heavy focus on, yep, chickens, you can guess. There's also some other art with brief visions of darkness entailed therein in the form of some human skull pieces. It's a mix of painting and string art, and Miss Owens's works will be the first for, of its kind to be presented in this manner at the Art Bar. So we'll get to talk to two artists tomorrow night, that being, of course, Miss Owens, as well as Brooklyn Messer, uh, the owner and proprietor of the Art Bar, which has been uh, a place of wonderful success in this regards for the past several months, from what I understand. And that is tomorrow night at 6. The Art Bar is located just up the street from the newsroom, directly across from Howard's Cable, their office, where you would pay your bill uh, if you have that utility or service. And that that's where they'll be tomorrow night at 6, and this is your invitation to join them and us for this one-of-a-kind event. Well, the first-of-its-kind local event focusing on the arts here in McGoffin County at the Art Bar tomorrow night at 6 with a story coming the following day. I'll be right back. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Hi, I'm Attorney Jeff Lovely. At my law office, we're determined to offer you and your family outstanding, cost-effective, and responsive legal services. I can help you if you've been injured in a car wreck. I'll be in your corner if you have a DUI or other criminal charges. You can file bankruptcy and stop those harassing phone calls, or I'll fight for you and your children in divorce and custody cases. For all your legal services, contact me when it matters. In Syresville at 349-4522 and West Liberty at 743-1965. It's summer, and everything you need to work, play, or anything in between can be found for pennies on the dollar at Parkway Gun and Pawn. Jewelry, electronics, games, and more, they buy gold, they buy silver, musical instruments, and they have new and used long and hand guns and ammunition. They can order a new gun of any kind and have it in 48 hours at Parkway Gun and Pawn. Yes, Logan makes the best truck bodies on the market, and they also have a fully stocked warehouse of dump body parts, PTOs, hydraulic pumps, hoists, anything you need to get back on the road. And they are a full-service steel and aluminum service center. They keep I-beam, channel, angle, pipe, round rod, rebar, expanded metal, sheet metal, and aluminum all in stock. And if you've got a big project, they do commercial manufacturing to your specs. Logan since 1904. Wanting you to have a healthier life means providing access to quality, affordable health care. And to do exactly that, Hope Family Medical Center offers full dental care with Dr. Pratt and his team, a pediatrician team of three doctors and nurses and moms. Complete health care by family physician Dr. Kelly Pratt and nurse practitioners Mildred Sizemore, Gail Faria, Shannon Conley, and Heather Blair behavioral health services with Kimberly Davis with in-house lab testing and results in-house x-ray and pharmacy and all the caring knowledge and experience that these medical professionals represent at Hope Family Medical Center A tire more than 25% low, about 8 pounds, makes you 3 times more likely and worn out tires 11 times more likely to be in a tire related crash. Don't take your or their safety for granted. Come in for a free inspection, 6 months no interest financing, the best price and best selection at Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Come by and check out this 2014 Jeep Compass 4x4 and come by and check out this luxurious, roomy, limited 2011 Town & Country. 
and this row of 2015 and 2016 Nissans and Fords and more, all like new, with low miles starting at $99.95. Check them all out at Broadway Auto Sales in Paintsville. Next, a correction to be made to a report that I believe I made one week ago today on the 24th. A correction that I was expecting even before making that initial report, as both I and court employees believe that the documents which were filed in the case of Henry Line were incorrect. However, that was what we had at the time, and now we do have that correction or clarification after it has been made by the judge in regards to the actual time Line is to be sentenced to. A correction in that 75-year-old Henry Line will not serve five years in prison for theft, as I earlier told you, but actually more than five years. Line had defrauded a Sagersville couple out of $250,000 in some sort of an oil or gas scheme that he had concocted, and after being charged, ultimately, when he was unable to pay back the promised money, he had on several times before a judge promised to pay back the victims their loss. He actually appeared before the court on December the 10th of 2015 and was given 90 days to pay. Then March the 29th of 2016, he was given another 90 days from that point. May the 19th of 2016, he was given 15 days. May the 26th of 2016, he was given an extension for 24 hours. But the payment was never made. And after it wasn't made, Line hid out from police, including the Kentucky State Police, who even staked out his West Maple Street Sagersville residence on multiple occasions. It was when the victim's daughter, Jonna Carpenter, saw Line hiding in the back seat of his wife's car while they were traveling that she followed them to Paintsville, where she called the Paintsville Police Department, and they came and arrested Line. The clarification to be made tonight is that Line was not sentenced to five years in jail, and given credit for the 28 days that he had served, but rather he was sentenced officially to 10 years in jail with that same 28-day credit. And as I told you in that report about a week ago, it's also believed that Lyon is the subject of another investigation or other investigations. Floyd County Commonwealth Attorney Arnold Brent Turner was the one who handled this case, and he noted in court records that he has been contacted by authorities out of West Virginia who say that there are individuals there, a couple who have been defrauded out of $287,000 by line, and there might also be other people in parts of Kentucky, West Virginia, or other states who have met the same fate. And lastly, on that story, I spoke with Jonna Carpenter, who is the daughter uh, of the victims in that case, and she's also asked me to pass along to you that if there's anyone else out there who may be a victim of such at the hands of Mr. Lyon, she would like to hear from those individuals. I think that is still well under investigation and of great interest to she and her family. Uh, they believe there are, are others out there, and if you would like to contact her or pass that information along to us, we would be glad to serve as the uh, middleman, so to speak, in that conversation. With that said, tonight's community calendar starts off with a birthday wish that I was handed via special delivery last week. Yes, I had a very lovely little granddaughter come to the studio and hand me this following note saying, please put on Monday, July the 31st, a very happy 71st birthday to Angie Laverne Crace. A lot of love from Brooklyn and Tiana Kilgore. So here it goes. Happy, happy birthday, happy 71st birthday, Angie Laverne Crace from some adorable grandchildren, and a host of friends and family. Happy birthday to you. Going on to the rest of your McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar, as you can well imagine, a few announcements and reminders school-related as we're on that official countdown. A little more than a week now. That's twice I've mentioned that, isn't it? I'm sorry. South McGoffin Elementary's open house is set for August the 3rd which is this Thursday, 3.30 till 6.30. They hope that you'll join them. The Sagersville Grade School has a site-based council meeting set for this Friday, August the 4th, at 1 o'clock, in which they'll discuss and or hire for the vacant principal's position at the Sagersville Grade School. That's site-based meeting this Friday the 4th at 1 o'clock. That's a special call meeting. The public is invited and, of course, as always, in Encouraged to attend. And North McGoffin wants me to remind you that their back to school night is August the 7th. That's a week from tonight. Well, in the afternoon, 4 to 6 p.m. next Monday at North McGoffin Elementary. And that's going to do it for a relatively 
brief community calendar. No other announcements for this Monday, but, well, we have some. They're just not for tonight. We'll hold those, but if you have one that you need to get in at any time of the year, P.O. Box 1443 in Sagersville. Email it to yournewstoday at yahoo.com. Facebook, Facebook me at Ritter Mortimer. Uh, phone it in at 349-3699. We always encourage you spell names, even the simplest of names, in case there's a poor connection or something, to make sure we get it right. And you can always fax them in by paper, that good old-fashioned way, one of the good old-fashioned ways that I still like to use at 349-3221, or simply drop them off uh, here at the newsroom. And you can leave them in the brass box in the door if I'm not here. We're located just above the Sagersville Post Office on East Maple Street. I'll be right back. It's definitely the chili. That homemade, from scratch, hot dog chili smothering every inch of our famous footlong that makes it a one-of-a-kind taste. The only thing that can make it better is to get one for only $2.49 on Mondays and just $1.99 after 4 o'clock. Get our famous footlong with homemade chili any day of the week and get one for cheap on Mondays, only at your Sagersville Lees. We are all human. Because we're not perfect, we tend to make mistakes. Unfortunately, some mistakes are severe and carry more consequences than others. If you have been hurt in a car wreck, a truck wreck, or because of someone's mistake, reckless or careless behavior, you deserve help with your medical expenses, lost wages, and serious permanent pain and injuries that you have been made to suffer and will continue to suffer for the rest of your life. If you have been injured, I can help. I'm attorney Don Wayne McFarland. Call me and let me go to work for you. 349-9000. Much more than diesel specialist, Black Smoke Performance is turning out excellent auto body collision paint and repair results with free quotes and estimates on everything from insurance jobs to that ding you got in the driveway. Custom lift kits, bed liners, winches and accessories, and full diagnostics and repair on anything gas or diesel from brakes to fluid changes to major auto repair. If you want it fixed, lifted, painted, customized, or just maintained, just call on the team at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville, 100 May Drive, or 349-8785. Parkway Pharmacy, now open earlier from 8 a.m. until 6 in the evening to better suit your schedule and lifestyle and to help you get better and live a healthier life. And if allergies are bogging you down, they're armed with the very best in over-the-counter relief for adults and your children. Reach owner pharmacist Jesse Rudd and his assistant pharmacist Megan Castle and their staff at 8 o'clock in the mornings or at 349-4400. Get your $10 tickets now for the 14th annual and perhaps biggest community day yet. Featuring the incredible Rhonda Vincent and The Rage and other headliners like the Dave Adkins Band, the Edgar Loudermilk Band with Jeff Autry, Toddy Preston and the Black Powder Express, and many, many, many more. And all the food, fun, games, and fabulous prizes that you can stand. All for just 10 bucks. And kids 12 and under, they get in for free. Community Day in the Rainy Park in Sagersville is Saturday, August the 19th. Here's another rare find at Gateway Motors. This Subaru Tribeca all-wheel drive loaded with third row seating and more and great deals and low payments, most under $200 on units like this 07 Santa Fe all-wheel drive, this 2012 F-150. How about this 08 Yukon all-wheel drive, 90,000 miles, a one owner, and everything else on the lot at Gateway Motors in Sagersville. Three, four, nine cars. Stop by the seasonal shop for the two biggest events of the season and find all the help, gifts, and decor you need with baby and wedding registry, something extra special for the new arrival or that little one turning one or more, and wedding registry, ideas, and planning for everything from the ceremony to gifts to the home. And the seasonal shop also has thoughtful ways to honor memories of loved ones lost with personal and gravesite decorations that they'll gladly deliver to our local funeral homes. Find something to cherish all your memories at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. In speaking with Johnson County Board of Education Chairman Bob Hutchison last week, I was aware that there was to be an upcoming announcement in regards to naming a new superintendent of schools for the Johnson County School District, to which that was announced earlier today on the school's website. 
After much consideration over what was at least, as Chairman of the Board of Education Bob Hutchison informed us during our last meeting coverage, were six applicants for the position, four from in-state and two from out-of-state, with possibly others, the school board has now made their official selection for the new superintendent of Johnson County Schools. Today's announcement comes on the heels of one that I brought you weeks ago in coverage of a Johnson County Board of Education meeting in which Superintendent of Schools Tom Salyer had announced his retirement, effective as of today. Salyer, with 34 years in the Johnson County school system, and just like his replacement, served in the capacities of teacher, coach, assistant principal, principal, director of pupil personnel, and others. He was also a big part of a great deal of growth and success in academic and athletic accomplishments in the Johnson County school system. A district which today announced the new superintendent of Johnson County Schools, a 19-year veteran of the system, a graduate of Johnson Central High School, a special education teacher, an assistant principal at Johnson Central Middle and Johnson Central High School, and the athletic director for the high school, as well as other titles once held by Tom Cochran, who was also the principal at Highlands and Central Elementaries and the Director of Pupil Personnel. He was also the Interim District's Innovations Coordinator, and he now has the duty of continuing to advance student success with the already excellent programs that are in place in the district, with tomorrow, I believe, being the first day on the job for Mr. Cochran. Before I go on to your weather forecast, I need to back up just a bit and say this. I'm just now realizing that one of the segments that I had intended to put in tonight, which I omitted accidentally, uh, was some information about Wednesday's groundbreaking at the industrial park. I'll have time to get to that tomorrow, and the reminder tomorrow will serve just as good. Uh, just a brief reminder now, that's, I believe, at 1 o'clock, Congressman Hal Rogers and others for the groundbreaking ceremony at uh, the industrial park down on Gifford Road at the exit there, exit 70, I guess it is now in the Mountain Parkway. And I believe there's also going to be some other events. I know that Congressman Rogers will be making some other stops in eastern Kentucky and nearby, uh, possibly some announcements to be heard that day somewhere else. I'm not sure, uh, but we'll be bringing you that report as well. In addition to some other stories like the art bar tomorrow night and other things that we're working on, trying to find you some good news as much as we can. Sometimes it's a little few and far between, as I say, but nevertheless, it's out there. And I I'm always excited to bring it to you. And I'm excited to bring you some good news in your Licking Valley RACC forecast, at least for a bit. We've still got high pressure in charge. I've seen uh, here watching the monitors on the outside of the studio uh, at the end of the 6 o'clock show, clouds moving in. Even though mostly clear skies is in the forecast, we've seen some partly cloudy skies here as of late. One common denominator in much of the forecast is going to be some fog for the next several days. Tomorrow we'll see, well tonight rather, we'll see, even though it's calling for mostly clear, we got a few clouds above right now, but 61 degrees for nighttime lows, no rain in sight. And that's the case for your Tuesday with a little patchy fog tonight, patchy fog in the morning, up until say 10 or 11 in some areas. Another mostly sunny day and mostly beautiful day in the neighborhood tomorrow, mid-80s again dry fog again tomorrow night after three or so in the morning under nothing more than partly cloudy skies by midweek our next frontal system that's going to change our weather will start to kind of work its way in with that though temperatures for wednesday at least will hold pretty steady right in the mid 80s nighttime lows right around 65 as for precipitation chances well i think we'll see mostly sunny skies definitely throughout most if not all of your wednesday and dry up until say maybe five or six and after that then we see a 30% chance of some showers as we start to wind down your latter Wednesday afternoon hours. Wednesday night, that continued 30% chance, and into your Thursday, 84 degrees again. No change temperature-wise, and not much of a change uh, uh, as far as chances of showers again. Look at that, 84 with that same fog at the beginning and end of your Thursday as well, and 65 again for your nighttime low, and still a slight chance of some showers, thunderstorms, mainly across the board Thursday, anytime after 9 o'clock that morning, to the tune of about 30%. Now, those chances start to ramp up by Friday as the front gets closer, and you can see the effects it has. Uh, maybe a similar setup to what we just kind of went through. As for Friday, 82, partly sunny, and a 60% chance of showers, hoping that we won't see 2 to 3 inches of rain like we did last Friday. But it's kind of a, I don't want to say a similar scenario, but just a forecast-wise when you're looking at it in print. 
Got another good chance of some showers. Got another day. We'll see the uh, low 80s. And for the weekend right now, got another Saturday in the mid and upper 70s with mostly sunny skies on your Saturday. Only a 20% chance of some lingering showers early. And after that, a dry... Does this sound familiar this past Saturday or what? And after that, a dry Saturday afterwards. Uh, and then Sunday... 80 degrees and mostly sunny and dry. I mean, it's nearly a mirror image forecast for the upcoming weekend. Of course, this is just Monday. We've got a ways to get there and maybe even a wet day or two before we get there. That's going to wrap it up for the last show in July. I hope to see you back here for the first one of August tomorrow night. For more of your news today, please enjoy the rest of your Monday evening. Good night.